Good afternoon, Britain. It is now 1.22. Now, an Islamist who launched an anti-Israel knife attack in Burnley has been given an indefinite hospital order instead of a prison sentence. Now, in 2020, 60-year-old Munawar Hussein targeted Marks and Spencers because he believed the shop funded Israel in persecuting Palestinian people in the Middle East. So he entered the Burnley m and and stabbed the store manager and a customer. He was then detained under the Mental Health Act and he went on to stab a male nurse in a mental health hospital. He believed the nurse had converted to Islam from Christianity. Well, the other way around. Uh, yeah, OK, telling police that he thought it was, it was wrong. Yes, thought it, yeah, exactly, he thought he converted the other way, didn't he? And he called him a, a filthy pig and then tried to stab him. Uh, so is it right that a man that attempted to murder three people has been spared jail? Yeah, why does this happen? Joining us now is barrister Rebecca Butler. Um, Rebecca, reading this case, a lot of people will think, well, why on earth is he not behind bars? This is someone who had a, an ideology, it sounds like. It's someone who um, conducted himself in a very violent way, uh, stabbing a woman in the neck and then going on to harm two others. Um, why would someone like that get a hospital order rather than a prison sentence? Yeah, but I think it's, it's important to make clear that these people aren't in a, your local district general hospital. They're actually in secure units. So they have been denied their liberty, as society would expect. So um, the, you, you can only get a hospital order if you have a diagnosed mental health disorder. You, you can't claim... Uh, that you want to go to a different sort of custodial sentence because you have mental health issues. It has to be proven by psychiatrists and then the sentencing court, be that magistrates or Crown mm. Court, will then decide whether to detain you under, you know, Section 37 of the Mental Health Act. Th this is not a light sentence in any terms because... You know, if somebody without mental health problems commits a violent offence, they'll pretty much know how long they're going into hospital for. Somebody under Section 37 of the Mental Health Act does not know how long they're going to be uh, yeah. detained for. There is no date of delete, uh, release. There is no parole but, date. So it's not an easy option. No, right? I understand that, but Re Rebecca, I think my, my concern would be that is his mental health problem not radical Islam? And then if anyone is now guilty of committing an Islamist offence, can't they just claim to be mental? Uh, I think that is an assertion that might find disfavour uh, if you made that. Uh, frankly, no. I mean, it is an ideology. It is, in my opinion, and probably yours, a warped ideology, but I don't think it would fall under you know, the normal psychiatric um, ICDM categorizations that we have for mental health disorders in the UK. Yeah, because this came up in a big way uh, with the Nottingham stabbing. Mm. Uh, Valdo Calacane, he was given a hospital order instead of a prison sentence, and the victims' families have challenged it, and they continue to do so uh, when people will listen. Um, and we see this happen with violent criminals that they're given a hospital sentence, which must be more cushy than going into a prison cell. Um, it must be. And there is a, you know, a chance of being treated and made a better person in a specific medical sense, which a lot of people might support. But it doesn't feel necessarily like punishment in the way that a victim might actually want from our criminal justice system. Well, punishment, as we see it in, in most Western democracies, is a combination of a punitive and a rehabilitation element to your sentence. Now, you know, if you committed murder and you didn't have a diminished responsibility defence to it, which would result in you going into uh, Section 37 mental health detention, then you would have a parole date. You would have a minimum time that you would have to serve under our system. Now, the Valdo uh, cocaine, uh, you know, matter last year, it, you know, the, the, I, I understand fully, and of course we all do, we fully, uh, fully empathise and sympathise with the families uh, of the murdered victims in that case. But if you look at it in the round, you can't hmm. possibly believe that anybody who wasn't of a disordered mind will wow. commit the offences that he did. I, I get know. it, but that's, that's what I kind of don't quite get, Rebecca, because you're absolutely right. You know, if anyone commits these kind of crimes, surely by definition they are mentally unwell. 
And so Correct. where does that end? You know, this is, this is, can't you justify if someone you know, is found with bomb-making equipment? If you're going to blow yourself up on the underground, you must be mentally unwell. But that's also yes. a terror offence, isn't it? So you're saying you would need yes. that. You would need a specific medical diagnosis, and and is is that quite hard to get? That yes, absolutely. Mm. You can't just rock up and say I've got diminished responsibility. Please believe me. Uh, you have to have independent psychiatric assessment, and it's not just one either. You know, each side can appoint their own experts. It is absolutely not a soft option to get a mm. hospital order because you have indeterminate detention. Now, there, are, you know, by the way, the comforting figure is that only 1% of the prison population actually is detained under the Mental Health mm. Act. It's about 8,000 currently. The reoffending rates are exceptionally low for uh, people who are then subsequently released under Section 47 back into the community under sort of controlled environment. But don't make the assumption that it is cushy or comfortable because it really isn't. They have lost their liberty. Um, they don't see their family. They are very, very restricted. Yeah in what they can and can't do. You know, it is punishment and it is an indeterminate punishment. Some might say that actually that is pretty harsh that they don't know on day one when yeah. they're ever going but, to be released, mm -hmm. if at all. I mean, not for a violent criminal. I'm, I'm sure most people wouldn't have any sympathy in that respect, but they may see it as, yes, he is confined to a space. He doesn't know when he's going to be allowed to be free again. So how dissimilar is it from being in a, in a prison cell? But people are concerned about what happens next. Mm. When will he be allowed out? If he can prove to a mental health practitioner or whoever's working at this unit that he's now in um, that he's sane of mind, will he be allowed out? To be honest, they're under far greater supervision because they're under medical supervision uh, following a mental health tribunal, following a hearing. And at those hearings, expert evidence is submitted. Uh, they, they do not generally have success at those mental health tribunals. Quite often the patients think they're better than they actually are. And you'll have the, the medical, the clinical staff, plus a professional judge making a decision on release, mm. but release is not without condition. And they're then supervised under mental health legislation and by mental health experts. Actually, if you release somebody on probation from a prison, mm. their supervision is significantly less because of the burdens placed on the probation service, which by the way, we're about to see a major crisis in probation with this mass release of prisoners that we're expecting over the next six mm. weeks. Mm. Right. Well, thank you very much indeed, Rebecca Butler. Great to talk to you, Barrister, you. of course. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, look, hey, I, I defer to a better knowledge on this, absolutely, but I, I, find, I find it very difficult to understand what the difference is between radical Islamist ideology and being diagnosed with a mental health problem. I think also there's just a, a, a deep lack of trust in the criminal justice system Absolutely. at the moment. And so, also just in our institutions, whether it's mental health, whether it's hospitals. So he struck up a friend with a male nurse. He struck up a, a friendship with a male nurse who spoke Hindi. He said they discussed the nurse's religious background, during which this individual urged him to read the Koran. He asked to use a knife from the kitchen, was given a knife, and then shouted, you dirty pig, before attempting to stab the man. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I, look, I, yeah, I, I find it. I find it very, very. I also wonder how, ma how many more resources stuff. are needed for hospital yeah. orders. Yeah. Um, you're going to have to have several staff looking after you, giving you specific treatment for your condition, mm. um, and then you know, clearly, still a threat in that hospital wing.